All right, welcome back to part two. Let's go ahead and get started painting this aircraft. I'm uh, going to go ahead and open up your paint kit here and open the Fuselage Master. Very big file, takes a second to open. So just bear with it. And uh, once we get it open, we're going to go ahead and I'll give you a brief rundown of the layers. Alright, um, we'll zoom in to right there so we can see the whole thing. Um, paint kit opens up here. You have your white base, which is just your background, basically. Uh, it's an important layer. We'll use that later uh, to size up logos and things like that. Uh, your winglets, which are obviously the ones right here. Uh, these are the layers that deal with the winglets. You have your paint layer, which is already... I believe pass through, yeah. So it's already set to multiply. We'll do it anyways. Just helps out. It makes it look cleaner. And uh, so with the paint layer selected, that's where we're going to put our paint down. Uh, fuselage layer, this is all your little details and things like that on the fuselage. Antennas, it's going to be your SATCOM and your underside belly antennas, all those parts. Winglet leading edges. Your silver leading edges for your winglets. Window blanks. Um, I still haven't figured that layer out yet, honestly. The window line, we're going to be editing it in a second. Shows you where your windows are for the 3D model itself. Shadows, don't touch it. <laughs> they even tell you don't touch it. General weathering, that's all your, uh, uh, kind of like your shine mask. Um, dirt and stuff like that and then your paint guides this uh, tells you what if you uh, expand this it tells you what is what uh, everything blue is a fuselage texture you have your vertical tail where it's located on the aircraft roof of your cockpit uh, right in front of your windscreen of the cockpit uh, it's telling you where your antennas are your winglets bottom right top is this middle section here and then the left side of the fuselage uh, this is the 700 paint kit boundaries or paint regions rather uh, this is where this is red section here is all that flight sim is going to read uh, when it's looking to display the fuselage one two and three and this is how it'll piece them together and they have added these guides and we're going to be dealing with that shortly as soon as we apply the Alaska text and I'll show you how we do that how we separate the two because they have a gap in here this is a uh, looks like a, a one paint kit fits all type of deal they made it 900 length and you can get a six seven eight in there as well by just making the gap here so pretty cool little deal um, pretty smart saves them time and less space only one paint kit needed then you have your fuselage curve template. This is going to show you where your stretching occurs on the side here of the body as you near the bottom of the belly. Um, we're not going to run into that too much, so we don't really have to worry about it. But it, you would have to worry about it if you had an aircraft that had a really low cheat line, something like that, or text that ran really low and close to the belly. Uh, you could notice a little bit of stretching. Uh, this layer here I added myself. It's uh, something I've already pre-done from the first time I painted. Uh, this is where all the lines intersect the belly, where they go across the fuselage and all that. It saves me time in having to figure out and line up belly to fuselage, back and forth, back and forth. Alright, so, with all that said, uh, we're ready to do our first thing, which is going to be we're going to apply the Alaska Airlines text that is right here. And I'll uh, go ahead and open up the uh, a photo here. Uh, the left side of the aircraft, which is what we're going to be painting on first. We're going to be adding this text right here. Uh, it's actually blue in color. It looks black, but it's blue. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Throat's a little dry today. And, um, and uh, um, as you can see, it's going to, on our paint, stretch from fuselage 1 on to fuselage 2. But there's this big gap right here, and to figure that out, how big we need the logo, 
you could a paste on there and apply it but it's going to create some blurries I'll show you the way I do it keeps the vector file kind of all sharp that's the way I do it so so we're going to bring these windows over here just temporarily so with our uh, layer selected for our windows I'm going to go ahead and select these four or excuse me five windows here I'm going to zoom in do everything at 100% zoom when you're when you're pasting stuff over and we're going to paste them in control V to paste it in if you don't know we'll just drag it over because it pasted it where I had that selection this is this half of window is actually part of the ha other half of this window here so we're going to align it align these two together click it on and off a few times you can see it's a little bit too far down there we go 25 percent zoom should give us a pretty good idea okay as we can see this logo goes from half of the cockpit windshield to in between these last two windows. Anytime I'm measuring um, for a logo, I always go to the base texture. That way I know that I'm not going to move anything that I don't need to move because it should be a lock. It usually is a lock. This one isn't, but it's usually a lock texture and you can't move it. So get my select tool here and it needs to be half of the cockpit to halfway between these two windows. I don't care about the height, but we just need this width in here, and I'll show you why. Go edit, copy, and then uh, we're going to deselect. I'm going to show you how to do it with menus, and then uh, I do it with shortcut keys, control D, deselect. Now, the reason why we did that is by copying it, it gives us the width, how many pixels wide that is right there. So if you want to find out how many that was, go to File, New. And what we copied will show it right here, 2,409 pixels wide. So that's how wide our logo needs to be. So just hit cancel. We don't need that. Now we're going to open up our Alaska text, which is right here. It's a vector format. I downloaded it from logotype.com. Uh, I'll put a link in my description here to show you where you can get stuff like that these vector files or you can google Alaska logo vector and they'll come in an EPS format dot EPS or dot AI and uh, that's how you do them there so open it and it's going to open a dialog anytime you open a vector format and basically what this does is it allows you to open this image in infinite sizes uh, all the way down to one pixel wide all the way up to uh, 9,000 pixels wide it doesn't matter and it will always be very crisp very sharp edges and that's why vector format vector logos are absolute key uh, we're gonna set the width here 2409 we're gonna go a little bit bigger 2413 uh, is what I measured the first time I did this so that's what I'm gonna go with 10 whatever you measured that's what you want to do hit OK it's going to open this Alaska up in a whole new layer. As you can see here, the center of the A has white still in it. We want to see transparent all the way around this thing. So we're going to get rid of this white. And to do that, we will select our magic wand. Tolerance to one, meaning we only want to select just the white color itself. We don't want to select the edges because it could screw up your logo. And as you can see, we're only 33% zoomed in on this. So we're going to go ahead and click left click one time in there. It gives us our selection. Make sure anti-aliasing is uh, selected. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. This is the way I say it. I'm an idiot. You can correct me in the comments. Beat me up. Um, make sure that's checked. What that's going to do is give us a smooth edge. And just hit delete. There we go. See, now we're transparent again. And do the same thing for this back part here. Control D, deselect. Get rid of that. So we're ready to port this over to our paint scheme now. I'm going to edit. I'm sorry, select all. Edit, copy. Go over here. Go to our paint layer. We're going to make a new layer. And uh, you can open up the properties here. And we're going to name this 
last uh, text. And control V, paste it in there, and there you go. That's how big it should be. It automatically does your height for you. Like I said, all you needed was the width. So we'll go halfway to the co cockpit windshield here, halfway to the window here. Tip to tip. And to get the up and down, we just look at the logo here. And you see it's the A and the S is slightly below the window line. So you just kind of match, flip back and forth, and match that as best you can. Looks pretty good right there. All right, so that's set. Um, and all we got to do now is, as you can see, it's pure black. We need to correct the color on that. So to do that, we go into our layer here, just off to the side here, not on the text, but off to the side. Double click it. It's going to open up a layer style window. We're going to do a color overlay, which changes the color of it. I'm going to change that color right here. Before we do that, we need to open up this text file. In Alaska Text Blue, we're going to copy this color code here. Get rid of that. Open this up. And we're going to paste that right here. Control V, paste that in. Hit OK. There we go. It's going to be 100% normal blend mode. Hit OK. There, now it is the correct color. It is where it should be. So, Go ahead and do that on yours if you hadn't already, and uh, we'll stop part one right here because I'm already running in close to our 15 minutes of time. And uh, when we pick back up, we're going to go ahead and draw the lines for this side. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to paste this over to the right side, and then we'll do our lines for both sides and uh, in the belly. So, see you in a second.